Hi, welcome to Unit 3, and this is We Are Tour Guides, uh, 3D Virtual Tours and Interactive Maps from the Switched On Computing Curriculum. And I'm just going to go through this sample and talk to you about how you can deliver it in your classroom. So, there's a few things you need to know about this unit. Beforehand, you need to obviously uh, manage to get a copy of Photosynth or have access to the website. Uh, you'll need image, composite editor, Bing Maps, and it's also good if you've got digital cameras. Um, but it also depends on whether you've done bring your own device in your school. Um, but what we should have at the end of it is an electronic map that links to the 3D images that the students have been creating. Uh, so uh, let's show you how to do this. So there's lots of different places that your students can take pictures of. If you want your students to be able to do this project, uh, your best bet would be to actually stick to local places where you can actually take your students. Um, alternatively, you could arrange a field trip so you could take them to a, a local museum uh, or, or, or a living life place uh, such as the Black Country Museum might be good to do this. So you could, do, uh, you could go to villages, towns, schools or wherever they live and take a whole host of pictures. Um, and this will be useful to have a look at some of these places before you start a unit. So again, with the other units, there's lots of different curriculum links in here. There's other subjects you could get involved. Um, and what you can talk about on this is uh, there's the how networks can offer collaboration. So one of the services we're talking about online. Uh, so if you think about it, you can collaborate through Bing Maps because you're going to be able to share links and lots of people can like click on those and use that service online. Uh, we're going to be using technology respectfully and responsibly because we obviously need permission for the images. A uh, variety of software to do different things, evaluating the information. But for example, depending on the subject matter, you could link this into history, geography, numeracy, literacy, art and design. Uh, because obviously if we're doing 3D images, you could talk and link that into 3D shapes. Uh, history, if you went to a, a, a museum or... Like I said, the Black Country Museum is a good place to visit. Uh, you could link that in that way. So what we expect our students to get out of this is we want them to be able to develop uh, their photographs on location and explore ways that they can create their new image. Now they will be working together because it would be good if they had a shared project. Uh, but at the end of the project they'll have a chance to use their evaluation skills and improve on their literacy and uh, give some feedback on each other's work. So one thing you might want to do beforehand is actually go on the internet and have a look at some panoramic images that exist. Because if you've got panoramic images, you can kind of start talking to your students and get them to think about how they might have a picture that's that big when you've only got a small camera lens. And then you could kind of draw into a discussion about what they're going to be doing. And you could talk about virtual tools and move on from there. Now before you start this, you want to make sure that you've got a number of tools available to you, such as your digital cameras, your tripods, examples of panoramic shots, large prints that they can have a look at, video tutorials, I've included some in this presentation so you can refer to them later, uh, an image composite editor and Bing Maps. So you want to be able to actually uh, play around with the tools available. This is a video tutorial showing you how to use Photosim. So once you've opened up Photosim, it will ask you to sign in with your Hotmail or Live ID. Now all you do is you can fill out the details. So this is going to be my office. I'm going to you can put tags in there. Says images. You can add your photos in. So I've got a folder on the desktop called Pickies. I'm going to go to desktop. There should be a folder. They're called pickies. There it is. And you can select all your pictures and click on open. Right, I can pick a thumbnail if I want. I can add or remove pictures. Uh, you can also choose whether you want everyone to be able to see it or not. So you can hide it if you don't want people to see certain images. And that might be good if you've got students in the photographs. So um, there's another one. Uh, this is my office. Here's all my computer screens. And then all you do is you press simp. 
And what it starts doing is generating all those images. And you can see here that I haven't got one on this account before. Uh, so I've not used m much of my space that you get with your live ID. Uh, so it publishes your synth. And what it will do is open up the browser and you can have a look. So if I go to view, it's opened up the browser. So let me move that out of the way. And the great thing about it is that it does its best to stitch all the pictures together. So that was only four photographs, but you can see how well that's worked together. And if you've got students that are a little worried, uh, the alternative thing you can do with them is maybe use a tripod. Um, and then you can share that address with anyone you like. Uh, um, so that's really, that's how simple it is to use a photosynth. So this is going to be the first lesson and what we're going to do in this is you're going to actually introduce them uh, to the term tour guide and kind of explain that they're going to be virtual tour guides and giving people like tours of different areas. Now what you want to do is to display Bing maps and ask the students where they would go on a virtual tour. Now if you want to give them guidance you can stick to a local area such as uh, maybe you're planning on going to a trip to a castle so it's completely up to you. Uh, but to start this, you can locate a street place uh, or you can actually use the student's postcode because they like having a look at where they live. Um, and you can step into that area using Bing Maps and you can move the image around and actually get the students like to use the street view and street side tool and they can actually go around their street where they live. Um, and what they're going to do is you're going to explain to them that they're going to create some 3D images so that people can pay a visit to their local area. So um, that's what we're pretty much going to sum up in the first lesson. So they'll have time to use the tools, they'll have time to kind of plan their own virtual tour or have a plan of their area of where they want to walk and you can kind of just go into a bit of detail with them. So the type of work that they might do in the first lesson is you might want to provide them with an atlas and a map and kind of explain well what's good about having an atlas, what's good about having a map and kind of look at the strengths and weaknesses of both. So you might say that uh, a map uh, shows you more of the street view. It might be a bit clearer that way, whereas an atlas just shows you an overall view of the area. But it might be that the atlas has uh, other ways of showing you what the terrain is like. So you can kind of weigh up the, them both and you can actually get students to investigate alternatives to these as well. So maybe get them to start thinking about the electronic maps. And now for homework, you could actually get them to research famous landmarks in the area um, or just famous landmarks in general. And they can write a brief explanation of why they would like to go there. So you're also helping their literacy. So moving into the second lesson, you'll probably want to display a street side image of a location. Now you could pick a postcode, you could pick the school if you want um, and explain how it's made up of lots of images from the same location and that the computer software kind of stitches these together and you can explain that this is called a panoramic picture so they get a good idea of what the difference is between a panoramic picture and a regular picture um, and you can also what I would recommend is having some pictures beforehand uh, of images that have been cut into smaller pieces and kind of challenge them to put them back together now you could do this as two separate tasks. You could even bring in some puzzles for your class, get them to do the puzzles and see how difficult that is. And then you could do it with regular images that you might have used. Um, and you can split them into gr groups um, and you can use Bing Maps and Streetside uh, to see whether they would like to take pictures of their local area. Now to get students to appreciate how stitching works, you could get them to search for images online and cut them up and kind of put them back together. But alternatively, what you could do is actually go onto Microsoft Word, get a picture, put it in there, 
And using the shape tools, you can actually draw outlines and get the students to use these tools to create their own jigsaw and get the other students to then cut them out and get the other students to put them back together correctly so that they appreciate how images are stitched together. Um, now for homework, they can draw a landscape using traditional methods or one thing that they might want to do, which isn't mentioned in the booklet, is you could actually get them to gather holiday magazines uh, to see how well they explain some of the destinations they want to go. So if you wanted to link that in with an English project, it might be good to get them to get some holiday locations and kind of explain what it is they like about them. Now for this activity, you might want to explain how to make a Miriorama. Now I have got a video tutorial and I will be putting a link to the location on the next slide uh, and I'll put that in the video tutorial as well. Um, but what we're going before they go out to their locations, you obviously need to do your risk assessments in school. Now if you want to keep it close by, it would be better for you in terms of delivering the lesson. Um, so what you need to do is make sure the students know how to use their digital camera. Uh, remind them what a 360 degree panorama is and uh, for those students that aren't necessarily confident with the camera or that stable uh, you might want to make sure you've got a tripod that will help those out and what we could do uh, is beforehand so that you can see how the panoramic picture works is you can create a kind of craft tool in class so you can create the miriorama in class so they can see how the horizontal lines link together um, and I'll show you that video tutorial in a moment uh, but give your students plenty of time to take these images because they're not going to just click 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 and have the images done because there might be some images that turn out blurry that they want to delete off their camera afterwards so give them time to have a good variety of images so like I said before you're going to pick an area or location for them to take their pictures from different angles for their synth or you can do a panoramic picture um, and you can kind of take on the Miriorama and link those together. Now for homework, you can get them to draw a location uh, that they're photographed from memory and kind of compare it later if you want. Um, but there's lots of opportunities there to link that into other subjects such as art. Okay, so this video is really to explain what a Miriorama is. Now, uh, you may have done them uh, yourself in primary school, you may have seen them uh, before, but basically the technique is that you've got one long piece of card or uh, piece of paper and you draw faint lines on the piece of paper and these are like your guides so you are able to kind of continue the story. Because for example, if you finished a part of it too high, it would look too choppy and it would end up cutting bits off. So all you need is uh, three pieces of small card, pen, pencil, colored pencils, um, and that's kind of how it works. Now, uh, you can do similar things with photographs that you've taken, and then you can use them to kind of uh, sketch one of these out and make sure that they fit in line. Um, this link to this file, so you can kind of have more details, is in the presentation. Uh, so if you want to find out more about this and want to read this at your own leisure, uh, you'll be able to do that. So this will be the activity where they start creating the panoramas. Now, uh, you might want to demonstrate how to launch the image composite editor, uh, also how to use Photosynth and how to share the images. Now, once you've explained to them how ICE joins the pictures together um, and how to use Photosynth, you'll be able to explain to them how to share their photo synths with friends because as soon as you've made your photo synth there's a button right at the bottom that says share and then you can use that link and use it with Bing Maps to kind of pinpoint your location uh, and that's coming up in another vi video tutorial as part of this presentation so you'll be able to follow that and use that with your class. So in the lessons they're going to create their panoramas and synths so that we can embed them in a class blog. Now, if you're wanting to link this in even more with your literacy with the students, you might want to get them to write a paragraph to explain their destination and what they've learned about their destination. Particularly if you've linked it into uh, history or your English lessons, uh, this will really, really help uh, develop cross-curricular links. Um, and then you can embed it in your classroom blog if you created one. 
Um, students can decide on another place that they would like to go for homework. Um, and what you could even do is encourage some students who have really, really gone ahead to actually, at the weekend, when they go away with parents or if they go somewhere, to create another panoramic view of wherever they go. It could be like a shopping center. It could be something basic like that so that they're continuing to use their skills. So this is Microsoft Image Composite Editor. So what we're going to do is go File, let's create our new panorama video. I'm going to open my images. So I I've got four photos there. I'm going to open them up. And what it does is it puts those images together you can see there that, that they stitch the image together. Now what you can do is you can play around with your settings down here or you can actually get it to sort it automatically for you and what you can do is you can crop it so if I want to make sure I've got more of the image in, I can do that. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Save it. You can choose your quality. Create a thumbnail. Again, you can put it onto photosynth.net or you can export it to a disk. I'm going to export it to a disk. So there's my photo stitch. I'll save that. And if I show you in So let's just make that a bit smaller. You can see how that is now stitched together. And you can see how you can barely tell that that was actually originally four different photographs. That's how well it works. So you can use that as a start and then move on to Photosynth afterwards. Hope that's been useful. So like I said previously, they'll be using it with Bing Maps and they want to save it so that they can add it to Bing Maps later. Now the video tutorial that pops up in a moment will show you how you can press the share button so you've got an address, but also show you how you can pinpoint that onto Bing Maps so that you can find it later and have your own locations. Now as a teacher, you might want to save all their locations beforehand uh, and then get all the addresses when the students share them with you with their email or however you want to approach it. Um, so uh, the next video will show you how to do this. So they'll be adding paths, they'll be drawing these paths, uh, they, they could even extend themselves and do their route to school and take some pictures of that and then they can take pictures and do photosynths of different areas on the way to school. You can uh, and you can even encourage them to think of information and media that they could link to this. So this is a quick tutorial on maps. Uh, so uh, on Bing Maps, you can type in a postcode. Just making these up. Um, and what you can do is, if you go to My Places, you can actually set up new locations. So you could do a new list. Say, call it Schoolwork and save our sharing. So there we go, I've got a place called school right now. And what I can do is now that I found my location, I can save that. I can choose what list I want it in, so there's school work. Save it. On here. I can click on it now and I can actually go to edit and in the URL, if I go to my share button on my photosynth that I've made. I can copy that address, go on to Bing Maps, I can give this a title and just say my office. This is not the real location of my office. And I can paste the address there and save that. So now, say for example if somebody was looking for schoolwork uh, say, for example, you shared this with your students because you can email it out. Uh, they would know when they click on Office, they can actually go to More Info and it brings up the Photosynth so they can have a look around. Uh, so that's quite 
a useful tool for them to have. Um, and that's pretty much the basics of using some of these features in Bing Maps. I hope that's been useful. So once you've walked your students through how to kind of make this photo simp, how to link it, how to share it, uh, you can use this, make sure that you assess it. So what we needed to make sure is that everybody could make a composite image and that they could use the electronic maps and explore the 3D images. Now that's the basics. Now what most students will get is they'll be able to compare it to doing it manually. So that you can do with a classroom discussion or again you could do it as a presentation task or you could kind of get them to include that as part of their blog task or homework. So you could say what would happen if uh, we had to stitch these images together manually because they did that jigsaw task which they link in there. Uh, evaluate how successful it's been. It's always good to evaluate work at the end of units and remember you don't always have to get them to write it. You can get them to express it in a number of different ways. So try and get your students to you could create podcasts to evaluate the work. Try and be a bit creative with that because a lot of students fall down on Mars with evaluations as they move up through school because they're so disinterested in them. Um, so they'll add markers to different locations and then at the end uh, some of them will be able to alter their images and as and act on feedback they've got uh, and draw paths on the electronic map. So that's pretty much what you'll be looking for when you assess their work. Now just to finish off uh, th this tutorial again, um, just to show you the links to the computing curriculum, remember that the students will need to be able to use software to compare given goals. Well they're using various software, uh, for example if they use Photosynth and, and Composite Image Editors, there's, there's a range of tools but also if they use Word to maybe make a jigsaw and they stitch them together. Um, but they might want to analyze the information, so if they're getting images from certain locations, they want to analyze whether they were accurate, whether they are from that time. Um, so again, they're going to be using different, what we're talking about here with computer networks, including internet services, uh, is there are many internet services online. For example, you've got your email. There's an internet service there. They've got FTP, uh, which is where you upload your files to a web server. You've got the cloud. So these are all internet services. So that's how you could be linking in to the networks part of the new computing curriculum, and that might help you out there. But just a reminder for those schools that are really, really panicking about the assessment, because um, although we've got the progression pathways there, many people are wondering what alternatives we can use. Again, you've got peer assessment where they can look at each other's work and write some feedback. Verbal assessment, you can write VA on their book or in the folder and get them to respond to it. And again, you've got the standard what went well, even better if. And as long as you're referring to the computing curriculum, you're giving them sort of reference about what they need to improve on for the future. So I hope that presentation has been useful today. Um, any questions, just drop me an email. Thank you.